So if you're like me, you like a really exciting AI hardware space. Uh, we need the best silicon from everyone. We need the most competitive market. So when things like DeepSeep come along, people get to talk about applying it to all sorts of hardware, and we can see who runs the best, whether that's a language model or a reasoning model, whether it's transformers or a mixture of experts, there's a lot going on here. So whether you need compute or whether you need memory or whether you need networking, having the best chip means a lot. Now, Intel has had a lot of chips for the data center for high performance compute. And depending on what flavor you want, and depending on what market you're in, there are different types. We know about Ponte Vecchio for the data center. That's all about FP64. Uh, that's all about high performance computing that goes into supercomputers. And that line is called the Xeon Max GPU. There was going to be a follow on to that product called Rialto Bridge uh, that was canceled. Uh, now that's going on to a next generation product called Falcon Shores. On the AI side, Intel has acquired several companies to do with AI, but the one that's using it most right now in the data center is the acquisition of Habana back in 2019. This startup using TSMC has designed now three generations of Gaudi processors uh, in a, aiming for high bandwidth memory into the data center for AI, for reduced precision, going through essentially the motions for training and inference. But right now their Gaudi 3 chip launched at the tail end of uh, 2024 is more focused on inference, the way it's uh, designed to be programmed. All of these, you know, designed to use uh, the software stacks and optimize software stacks for AI. The news today comes out of Intel's financial disclosures. It's Q4 24, their full year 24. We've got the co-CEOs on the call. That's Michelle jensen Holhouse, who's also the CEO of products, and David Zisner, the CFO. And they're going to talk about all the changes that are happening at Intel, as well as the financial results. Now, one of the highlights of the call is going to be the announcement that the Falcon Shores product, which is designed, which was meant to be designed as the next generation AI chip. Uh, is going to be essentially changed into a test chip. What they're doing that, what they're doing for that, is essentially making it a V0.5 chip, and the next generation beyond that, Jaguar Shores, is going to be the retail chip. That's the one that's actually going to go to customers. Now there are a number of reasons behind it, and I've spoken to Intel about this to get uh, the information out of them, so I can talk to you about it. So let's get into it. What's your minimum specification? So it's not obvious that something like this would come out on a financial call. For those of you who have been following my content, especially uh, my blog over at more-more.com, we covered Intel's Q3 financials, um, showcasing that they were expecting to only earn half a billion dollars from their AI silicon uh, that year, data center AI silicon. That's in contrast uh, to NVIDIA, who's making you know tens of billions. AMD last year made $5 billion from its AI hardware. So for Intel to only make half a billion from its AI hardware means that they are playing catch up quite considerably. And the timeline for the silicon back then looked something like this. We have the Gaudi line. Gaudi, for those that don't know, came from an acquisition of Habana back in 2019. Uh, Israeli-based firm looking at data center AI chips. There was a, uh, a full-on PCI card, essentially a training chip, then a smaller inference chip called Goya. Goya's uh, been mothballed, and now it's just essentially Gaudi. This is using TSMC's manufacturing process with HBMs. And we've had Gaudi and Gaudi 2 in the market for a while, as you can see, using TSMC 16 and 7. And at the end of last year, we saw the announcement of Gaudi 3, the latest generation using multiple chiplets, using eight HBM 2Es uh, on a five nanometer process. The idea being that this was going going to be their competition in a market that is uh, essentially full of uh, A100s, H100s, and AMD's uh, MI300Xs uh, as well, with the future line expecting to go into Falcon Shores. And not a lot was known about Falcon Shores at the time. However, over the past year, we have learned to understand a little bit about what Falcon Shores is about. And I want to go here to the roadmap as it looked, ISC 23. On This is just all the enterprise chips and what uh, Intel calls it swim lanes. So at the top here, we've got the Xeon scalable processors using P cores. So in this case, uh, Emerald Rapids and Granite Rapids. Those are both uh, launched now. Uh, we have Sapphire Rapids in on the E cores. We have um, Sierra Forest and then Clearwater Forest coming out after. 
on the GPU side, which uses more of the GPU Arc and Alchemist and Battle Mage based architecture, we have Ponte Vecchio. This is the massive 47 tiled chip that has ended up being part of uh, Intel's HPC, high performance computing, rather than their AI. And as you see here, a product called Rialto Bridge was expected to be the update for that. Intel canceled Rialto Bridge, I think, beginning of last year or maybe uh, at the end of 23, basically saying that customers in that swim lane wouldn't expect to update to Rialto Bridge. And for those customers, they're expecting Falcon Shores to fit into, uh, into that bucket along uh, with the AI side. And then on the dedicated AI down the bottom, we have uh, Gaudi and Gaudi 2 at the time as it was then. And then as we move over to you know, a more updated roadmap, this is uh, more sort of in the early 24 we got this. We saw at the top we have the E-Cores again, Sierra Forest, Clearwater Forest, the P-Core CPUs, including Xeon CPU Max with HBM. We've got Emerald Rapids, Granite Rapids, uh, and Diamond Rapids to come. On the dedicated AI, again, Gaudi 2, Gaudi 3, and then the idea was that after Gaudi 3, not a Gaudi 4, but a Falcon Shores product. And then when we have HPC, this is where we have Ponte Vecchio, the GPU Max series, again, going into Falcon Shores. And then we have two other product lines or that Intel also includes uh, in the DCAI business, the Flex GPUs um, and FPGAs are now spun out into Altera. But the whole idea was that Intel was going to coalesce a number of its swim lanes around the Falcon Shores product line, or at least around the Shores branding. And the whole point about Falcon Shores, as, a, as was originally intended, is it was going to be a chiplet design using Intel's advanced packaging, using as much of Intel Foundry as possible. But on it, you would have chiplets of either uh, CPU uh, from you know, the, the P-Core line, or maybe even the E-Core line. Who, who knows? Chiplets can do anything. Um, you're going to have uh, GPU tiles, like with HPC. You could have AI tiles, like with Gaudi. And then on top of that, also HBM. Um, using a mixture of Intel EMIB and Foveros and all the good stuff besides. Intel put that out there to, sh to showcase we want a chip that essentially kind of does everything and be configured the way that customers want. So if you have a cloud service provider like an Amazon or a Google who wanted one configuration, then you had Oracle or uh, Ministry of Defense or uh, Department of Defense even, or the National Labs wanting something else. The use of chiplets enabled this mix and match uh, topology. And uh, Intel was talking about how this was going to be an improvement in performance for what? It was going to offer compute density in an x86 socket. So the idea was it would actually, there would be versions that would be compatible in the standard x86 uh, Xeon socket. And it would have memory capacity and bandwidth. And we see on the right hand side here, it showcases that there could also be custom chips as well for particular clients who wanted custom silicon inside, whether that would be manufactured in partnership with Intel or external. And Intel went on to say that there would be, you know, this massive greater than 5x performance for what, greater than 5x memory uh, capacity and bandwidth. It would all be leading into the software stack, uh, the one API, uh, anybody dealing with Gaudi or with any of the uh, graphics related architectures will be able to port all of their software to Falcon Shores. At the end of last year at Supercomputing, we learned that beyond um, Gaudi 3 and beyond Falcon Shores, we would have Jaguar Shores being the follow-on to Falcon Shores. So if we look at this roadmap, what essentially is gone here is Falcon Shores. The next generation of chip in the AI space for Intel after Gaudi 3 will be Jaguar Shores. What Falcon Shores is being positioned as now is a test chip in preparation for Jaguar Shores. Intel's gonna go through some of the reasons why this product is now being pushed as a uh, test chip rather than a production chip. They're gonna talk about meeting the customers where they need to. The whole, one of the issues with the AI ASIC market right now, and one of the reasons why AMD and NVIDIA have gone to a yearly cadence with updates. Really, it's a two year because um, every other year is a memory update. But in terms of architecture, the rapid nature of how architectures are evolving, and I'm not just talking about recent things like DeepSeek or, or investments such as uh, Stargate. There's a lot of research going into what makes the most ideal AI workflow, what makes the best model how to train it, how to inference it, what that inferencing means. I've been quoted in the past as saying, uh, we know that training workloads, you know how many GPUs you have, you know the scale out, you know the amount of tokens you're gonna put in, you know the workload, it's a big blocky set of compute. 
whereas inference is going to be uh, uh, you know lumpy. You're going to have more inference, say for example, during uh, the work day than you are at 2 a.m. at night, especially if you've got something consumer facing that's actually interacting with people. If it's interacting with people, it's likely to be lumpy depending on certain times of the day. And you know, cloud is built for that. But the whole point is you have chips that are focused for training and for inference. And where Intel has sat with Gaudi 3, even though it has been announced, even though there's a couple of, I think, 2000 GPU installations, one of the things to consider here is that NVIDIA and AMD are talking about 10,000, 50,000, or NVIDIA is talking about 100,000 GPU installations at customers like uh, Meta and OpenAI and uh, XAI, for example or sovereign clouds. Intel's AI offering with Gaudi, you know, is competitive on a number of fronts, fronts when it comes to inference. There just hasn't been that amount, much amount of excitement. Maybe that will increase as going forward because people have been waiting on, say, Falcon Shores and what Intel's going to do next. Now, we're all very familiar with Intel's, you know, financial situation, I think, at this point. There, there is, you know, an amount of restructuring going on. And the way to think about it is if you're developing a product and your customers turn around and say, hey, the market's changing too fast. We need something that's um, a bit more you know, tuned in this way. We need optimizations on this side. We need this amount of silicon. We're not going to buy your first gen because we'd rather have your second gen. This is essentially what Intel is responding to. Now, when I mentioned Falcon Shores the first time, I mentioned it would be CPU, GPU, AI, and HBM. Uh, we later learned that the CPU was going to be dropped for Falcon Shores. So it sounds like Falcon Shores is going to be, again, the first product to the table that's going to have you know all of these parts of, of, of the silicon, all of these different architectures coming together uh, with control, with compute, built on leading edge process nodes. I mean, we've heard a lot of talk about Intel 18A. Uh, for example, that's going to be coming through to ramp in the second half of 25. You'll probably see products at the end of 25, if not start of 26. Falcon Shores um, and you know beyond Jaguar Shores was essentially meant to uh, hit those process nodes. But we know that beyond 18A, there's going to be a, a P version, a T version, there's going to be 14A. And then beyond that, you know, we're also looking at other techniques like high NA EUV. It looks like Falcon Shores, um, you know, maybe going down the 18A, 14A route, depending on which tiles are coming together to build those products. At the time I'm recording this, I obviously haven't heard uh, the analyst Q&A. As part of the financial call, I expect that to be a big part of this. People are going to ask questions. People are going to ask about revenues for Gaudi over the next couple of years until Jaguar Shores come out. Intel has, hasn't actually put a timeline on where Jaguar Shores, when Jaguar Shores is coming. Again, like I said, Falcon Shores was only re really spoken about in a higher level, not exactly what the configuration is going to look like. I showed you a bunch of images here, but they're literally just mock-ups of what it could be. Or, you know, does it have four tiles? Does it have 16 tiles? Are they in a ring configuration? Do you have a central IO die configuration? Do you have IO dies around the edge? Is it electrical? Is it optical? The, all these sorts of questions were never answered. And it looks like at this point, Intel might not talk about them until they're ready to talk about Jaguar Shores and what the Falcon Shores test chips and test designs are, are, are going to come to. Now, this isn't unprecedented, I should say. When Intel did its five nodes in four years, it was actually six nodes. They put in a node between Intel 3 and Intel 20A to de-risk some of the advances coming to 20A. In the end, 18A was so ahead um, in terms of time scale, and because 20A was more of an internal node anyway, they decided to also bypass 20A and go straight to 18A because the timelines lined up. And so that as a result, they've got their manufacturing essentially going along the right path and they're confident in that and the fact that 18a is also going to have volume internally and externally with customers means that they've uh, de-risked with this test node with the 20a to enable 18a to essentially steamroll right ahead falcon shores is now playing that role for jaguar um it's not 100% clear whether this actually accelerates the Jaguar time frame. I suspect it does, because uh, even if it's coming out in two years, you've got to imagine this part has already had at least two years of pathfinding and maybe one of design. Building chips takes a long, long time. Even if uh, a company says we're switching to a yearly cadence, that just means that they have multiple design teams working in parallel uh, in order to enable that, because the bigger the chips are, the longer it takes to design them, even with all these you know, new AI tools we're integrating into the chip design uh, methodology. 
Ultimately, uh, I think for most of us, this won't really affect us. Where it will hit is where Intel customers go and adopt their silicon. The nature of this market right now is such that the lead time for NVIDIA GPUs is somewhere north of 52 weeks. If you put in an order today, and if you're not a tier one customer, that's how long it's going to take for your hardware to get to you. If you want AMD silicon, it will take half the time. So you've got to think, is getting it in half the time and then spending perhaps some extra work making it work on AMD worth it for my time to market? Or do I just sit back and wait for NVIDIA? Customers aren't going to sit around on waiting for Jaguar Shores. They're going to go and get other systems in the interim and then circle back. Whether those systems are Gaudi 3 or whether they're competitors at this point, it's unclear. Uh, you know, the adoption of things like uh, MLIR to be more unified uh, across the industry uh, may have some assistance in helping people adopt Jaguar Shores when it eventually comes out. Uh, Intel will be, you know, teaching us about what their portfolio and what their strategy is going to be over the next couple of years. I fully expect over the, you know, the big events that Intel usually puts on during the year, we're going to hear more about this. We're going to hear more from the teams about what, what maybe what Falcon Shores looks like, but more about what Jaguar Shores is going to look like. For a company in Intel's position, you know, I made the rough recommendation in the Q3 financials that perhaps AI, this sort, this market for AI, they need to almost mothball and come back to it when the company as a whole is ready and they've reinvigorated their core markets. This isn't that 100%, but it means that they're essentially going to be taking a bit more of a strategic run up onto a springboard for Jaguar Shores. So we're going to see when it comes out, how it performs. It, Sounds like it may be in sort of the Rubin time frame, the MI400 time frame. No doubt internally, they've already got performance predictions for all of those in house. So they know where they need to hit. The question is, will you know, will the silicon design work? Will it yield? And can they price it appropriately? And then will people adopt the software stack? You have to think about, you know, software stacks are key in this AI space. All the work that Intel has done up to this point on their AI stack isn't going away. They're not having to restart over. They're being pretty clear that everything they're designing today is all going to be forward compatible for the Shores line. It was only going to be compatible for Falcon Shores. So now, no doubt, it was going to be compatible for Je uh, Jaguar Shores as well. So if you've got any thoughts on this, if you've actually been able to use some Gaudi uh, accelerators, I actually have Habana. Uh, I think this is first generation Gaudi. Um, that was actually designed pre-acquisition here. Picked this up for eBay for 50 bucks. Uh, let's see if uh, maybe some Gaudi 2 accelerators or so come on, come on the market. But if you have used uh, Gaudi, do let me know how you felt about using the experience and how excited you may or may not be for Jaguar Shores.